Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Welcome to Episode 5 of The Media Game. I'm your host, Amber Danes. In this episode, we will look at how to keep your cool in a media crisis. The media is a fantastic tool, but when things go wrong, it can also be your enemy. You have to know how to navigate your way through the crisis and not fuel the fire, but certainly take control early and make sure you know exactly where you're going. This is where a social media plan in a crisis and a PR plan in a crisis will be your best friend. In the 24-7 news cycle, the social media world fuels many of the ideas, the good and the bad that we hear out there. No more so than in a crisis. No longer can we wait 24 hours, even one hour sometimes, to hear from an organisation or a leader who is going through a crisis. We expect immediate action and responses so that we can make our decisions as consumers and maybe as clients or as staff and actually work through this with you. Brands are built in good times. They're also destroyed in bad times. Knowing how to navigate your way through that crisis means often the difference between continuing to trade or perhaps having to wind up your operation, close your business, sack your board, a whole bunch of events which can follow from perhaps product recall or it could simply be that your organisation hasn't been transparent about some of its practices. With social media, we've got everyone who plays the role of public court of opinion. So that could be even people in your organisation who might comment, who give interviews, who might be share their own thoughts and ideas. The number one rule what to do in a crisis is to make sure you know who is speaking to the media and who has authority to be commenting for social media. A lot of big organisations that I've worked with have a fantastic media and social media policy, which means we know at times when the rubber hits the road and there is a crisis, who can actually speak. A lot of people don't think about this when times are good, but certainly when times are more challenging and you suddenly have people leaking information to the media or commenting on areas of speculation such as an investigation, a court case or a product recall that could really damage your brand if it is not handled well. So the first thing you need to do is think about who you're going to call in to help you. If you have an internal PR team, certainly get them briefed very, very quickly. They have to be on the front foot. If you have particular social media platforms that your clients or your customers expect to hear from you on, you definitely have to work with those quite quickly. The news media will also be gathering information very, very quickly, but don't be surprised if they actually just show up at your premises or perhaps chat to some of your disgruntled customers or clients or staff that may be involved in the crisis. Knowing the media policy inside out before a crisis will really safeguard you in this particular circumstance. There are four distinct stages of a media crisis. The stage one can actually just be the first hour or the first 24 hours. And this is the fact-finding phase. This is where the news is often breaking and perhaps there's been a fire, a flood, some sort of incident, perhaps a announcement about you know, changes to leadership and the stock price is affected. It could be that your particular organisation is um, you know, dealing with the public on a daily basis and they've had some complaints that's led to a class action. Whatever it might be, that first one to 24 hours is your fact-finding stage. This is where we're going to be asking who, what, when, why and how. How did this happen? You may not have all the answers at this point. In fact, we wouldn't expect you to. But what the media and your customers and clients do expect is some sort of response. Silence actually breeds suspicion. So the days of saying no comment or we decline to comment won't actually work at all in a crisis. People will then speculate and it's much harder to build your reputation when the negative ideas or comments are already out there than it is to be on the front foot. That fact-finding stage is often the bit where we don't know all the information. This is the bit where you might be just be able to share a little bit because the police are investigating or it might be simply that you issue a statement at this time and let the media know that you will address them in due course because all hands are on deck dealing with the actual issue at hand. 
Stage two is unfolding drama. This is where we all start to think who is doing what and why. This might be the result of, you know, the injuries that someone sustained. If there's been an unfortunate accident, you know, there might be some fatalities or some casualties that you're having to actually announce, you know, from your organisation. It might also be that you simply want to update the media and your clients and customers on what's actually happening. It is okay to not have all the answers, but we do expect you to tell me what you do know and certainly don't shy away from answering questions. If there is particular confidentiality issues, very okay to say that, but let the media know what you are doing. Definitely make sure that you address the media at some point in that 24 to 72 hour phase, which is known as unfolding drama. In stage three, this is the blame game. This is where fingers are pointed and people's reputations really are at stake. So once that immediate shock and awe has happened, once we've had the fact finding, we've had the unfolding drama, perhaps two or three days later, perhaps it's even two or three months later if it's a particularly drawn out process, we have people actually speculating on what could have been done, done better, what should have been done, how you could have prevented it, who is really to blame. So as a CEO or a spokesperson or a leader in your organisation, you have to take control at every single stage. This might be the point where you might talk about the investigations that you've since launched, the protective and preventative measures which are now in place as a result of this incident. It's also a great place to be vulnerable. There is no point just reeling off a statement which sounds cold, which sounds unanimated and careless. People through TV and media outlets will actually be analysing your performance. This is where if we think, think you're just reading a statement or you're not being genuine, the blame gain actually goes up a notch. It's amplified. So it's very, very important in this stage to keep it cool, to make sure that you don't start pointing fingers, saying negative things about other people or organisations if you can't. Stage four is that kind of reputation moment. It's the fallout. This is where companies either walk through the fire and then go on to build a brand again or they perhaps close down entirely. There are many big organisations that might have had the biggest preparation they possibly could have in place for good times in media but because they haven't handled the crisis many situation well have actually had to close or their share markets have dived and you know their shareholders have lost faith and boards have been unseated. The fallout is what you're going to be doing for the future. This is the olive branch moment to extend to your customers and your clients to let them know how they can contact you, what is the product recall, what safety measures are there perhaps in place. So this doesn't happen again. You can never guarantee a crisis won't happen to you, but if you understand those four stages and at each juncture work out what you need to say, to whom and when, you'll be able to go through those motions feeling prepared, feeling on top of it in the midst of very challenging circumstances. The first thing to choose when you are organising your crisis team is who is the best spokesperson in a crisis. Believe it or not, it's not always your CEO. Sometimes it's better to have a range of spokespeople who are experts in their particular topic to address the media. Sometimes sending the CEO out or the business owner or the leader actually escalates the crisis to a higher level. For example, if you're an airline business and you send out the CEO every time that planes are grounded for maybe safety reasons, it sends a red flag message to your customers and your clients and even the media that in fact, wow, we've sent out the big guns, times must be tough, there must be something really big happening, why have they grounded those planes? That's not the sort of conversation you want to be having. You want to make sure that in those sorts of circumstances you might just send out your marketing person or you might talk, you know, get some aviation staff to talk about how they've had to change the plane over but certainly in due course they'll be back and flying within the hour. Who you choose is super, super important. So choosing who to send out to the media is super important just in terms of the messages you're sending and how you want those to be delivered. I've had many organisations who have sent the CEO out or the senior person in the organisation in that first 24 hour period and that can be really, really appropriate because they are sending a message that they're in control, they're not hiding from the media. 
The only reason you perhaps wouldn't send them is obviously if they're not there, so perhaps they're away on a conference, or they could be on holidays. That's why having backup spokespeople is really important. People who can actually be the second in charge or the third in charge, should there be reasons why someone can't come and speak to the media at that particular time. Similarly, there might be experts, so there might be scientists, there might be engineers, there might be you know police advisors, other people who could actually more clearly and succinctly deliver the message around that particular issue at any point in time. With the spokespeople you choose, you need to make sure they are under understand how the media work. If you're going to host a media conference or invite media to come to you for a statement and a Q&A, you have to be prepared to get hot under the collar. You need to make sure that you can be calm, that you can be collected and you can answer hostile questions. Losing your cool to the media or perhaps people in the audience is not going to help your reputation long term. And I can guarantee those clips of you getting fired up or perhaps aggressive or dismissive will actually be the ones that they end up using on social media and media. So if you are going to be a spokesperson in crisis, make sure that you're prepared and rehearsed, you understand how to navigate your way through difficult conversations to make sure that you're being genuine, show concern, show empathy. You don't have to admit anything particularly in the early stages when there might be speculation. We don't know, have all the answers, but certainly if you can tell people what you're doing, how you're doing it, and when you can expect to update them, it certainly will start to calm some of those waves which happen as soon as you start talking about a crisis topic. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.